Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and I want to start off by wishing you all a very happy new year. Now this video today is all about Haworthia. It's about my Haworthia collection and it's a general introduction to this fabulous plant from South Africa, a succulent that is very very popular in Japan where they prize very expensive cultivars. So a fantastic pot plant and one definitely to look out for. It's related to aloha and gasteria and we all know I have a bit of a, an aloha thing going on at the moment although I haven't really gotten into gasterias yet so you can imagine it's definitely a plant for me. So let's have a look at the plants I recently bought and hear more about Haworthia. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the seven Haworthia that I recently purchased and you'll have seen the unboxing of these plants on my Christmas Eve video, the vlogmas one. It was all done a bit hurriedly and even more hurriedly was me potting them up on Christmas Eve, can you believe? Now these plants spent 19 days in the post because of pandemic and Brexit or whatever but they seem to have arrived in relatively good shape. So I'm showing you the first of these plants, name went up on the screen there, and one of the really glorious features about these plants is the window-like appearance of their little modified leaves, their succulent leaves. When the light backlights them, it's like there's a drop of crystal gorgeousness inside each leaf, a really fantastic feature. Now this one we're looking at here I think has got to be one of my favourites. You can't really tell the translucent nature of those leaves from this picture but it is a beauty. Next up we have one in bud and the bad news is that the flowers really are quite insignificant. What we're growing these plants for is their wonderful leaves. Another quite similar but you can see that each one has a slightly different variation to the way that the leaves are presented and held and I'm just placing three together here the first one we saw and these other two let me go and get the first one and put it with the other two because these three are really very similar to my eyes now it can be that these plants once they become more hydrated and relax more we'll see their differences a little bit better but so far very pleased with them. So just a reminder that Haworthias need slight shade not ones for a south facing window or full sun in the greenhouse even in Ireland and they also need warmer temperatures. Now I have kept my attenuatas in the greenhouse and they've done okay but these new Haworthias are going to be kept indoors because I think a 10 degree minimum is better to their liking. This final one is an attenuata hybrid and you'll recall that I already have a couple of attenuatas in the greenhouse. These two here, this one which has had the correct amount of light and is therefore a darker colour. You can see there the dots on the leaves which earn it the name of zebra plant and a very attractive easy plant to grow but it does need shade unusual for a succulent it needs shade and here's my Haworthia attenuata that has had too much light and you can see how the leaves redden from having gotten too much light but one that grows quite easily all the same and there are several cultivars of Haworthia attenuata. One of course is the pearl which I have just shown you and have just bought. And these different cultivars have slightly different conglomerations of the white warty bits on their leaves. Each one earning it a slightly different recommendation. Now Haworthias have large fleshy roots so they need bigger pots than I've allowed and square pots apparently are better fitted to the plant.
And now let's just have a look at a couple of plants that have been in my collection for a while, such as this unnamed one. I'm not quite sure what it is, perhaps Cooperi, but here you can see how the light behind the leaves is just absolutely magical, making it a very, very special little plant. The mix needs to be well drained and I have put an amount of horticultural sand in here but when I repot them I'm going to use larger grain horticultural grit. I think it will just work better. In Japan where they prize a lot of the very very expensive cultivars they use a special ingredient in their potting mix and that ingredient is akadama. Now not kokodama, which is a, something completely different, but akadama, which are small clay pebbles about the size of large horticultural grit. And this is used in the mix, just adding a little bit extra aeration and also as a top dressing. And here we have another Haworthia from my collection that I've had for quite a while, but still don't have an ID for. And this one definitely needs to be divided and division is done by removing pops when repotting. So in spring, I think I'll repot all of my Haworthias and just do them up really nicely, including the new ones, which aren't in big enough pots. And hopefully they'll go from strength to strength. And finally, I have to show you this little baby here, which I've had for a very, very long time in my collection. Now this is Haworthiopsis tessellata, and you can see it's very, very small and very cute, but you are not going to believe how old this is. And the fact that it's so small, but so old, is down to a few factors. One of which is that it's in too small a pot, and the second of which is that it has been kept in a greenhouse in winter, which is probably too cool for it. So it has been stunted. So can you guess how old this plant is? <laughs> this plant is actually 11 years old. Let's see what repotting in spring and a little bit of TLC can do for it. And that brings me to the end of this introduction to Haworthia, which I hope you enjoyed. And I hope it'll entice you to find out more about these wonderful plants and to perhaps purchase one for yourself. Okay, that's all for now. Check back for lots more videos soon and a very, very happy new year. Bye.